Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, great to have you along. Today we're talking about Pacer. If you've never heard about Pacer, neither had I until just a couple of days ago. It turns out that the team that was working on Wipeout, unfortunately, went under. And I didn't know this um, just until recently. Uh, they went under back in 2012, which explains why we got the Omega Collection and rather than a new game from them in the uh, PS4's life cycle. And Three, well, that was fine, we got some remasters, but really the Wipeout community has been left just, you know, really wanting a new anti-grav racing game for the longest time, and there's been no one out there really to develop it. Well, turns out there was. There were a few devs who worked on, you know, kind of on Wipeout back in the day, and obviously gone off to do other things, work in different places. And uh, they found a way to raise the money um, to essentially try to make a successor to Wipeout HD and the, the Fury expansion. If you're a Wipeout veteran, just bear with me for a second. So I'm going to take a second just to explain to anyone who's new to uh, Wipeout or anti-grav racing. Just I'll give you a quick rundown of what it is and um, what makes it special and why you might really enjoy playing it if you haven't done so before. So the basics of it are you're flying a like a you know like hovering craft. So you're not in a car. There's no wheels. There's no traction on that. Um, so it's more akin to like flying and say like a fighter pilot, but you're not going to fly off the track. You are bound to the track in some sense. So your craft hovers a lot. The other thing you need to know about anti-grav racing, or Wipeout in particular, is that it's fast. It's the fastest type of racing that you will get in gaming, by some margin. Uh, the closest comparable thing was Pod Racer back in the day on the, on the you know, like back on the GameCube or, or N64, I think it was. I think it was a GameCube. Yeah, GameCube. I had, I had a GameCube, so it was on that. Um, it rewards fundamentally the same basic principles any racing game does. So you need to uh, become proficient at having a good racing line on the circuit. Don't crash into anything. Uh, try not to miss the apexes of your corners. And there's speed pads that give you a temporary speed boost dotted all around the circuit. You need to hit those. That's the one side of it. That's the speed management side of the game. You then have the combat systems of the game. So you have weapons and you have shielding. You can acquire weapons by collecting pickups, which are strewn about the track, and you can recharge your shields with pickups as well. So here you can see on your HUD display in the bottom center of the screen, you've got a pink meter on the right-hand side, which is your shielding system's energy remaining. So if that depletes, you need to go off and get pink pickups to recharge it. On the other side, you've got the weapons display, so it'll show you how much kind of ammunition you have in that and whatever energy is kind of remaining there. There's also a blue bar down the center, that's new. This wasn't in previous Wipeout games, this is new for Pacer. And that's basically uh, ERS, or Electronic Recovery System, for those who don't know. Uh, it's just a speed boost. You can fully charge that meter and use it as one big boost or you can you know eke it out and use it in sporadic boosts here and there tactically and um, that's a really cool new feature and it, as I said it wasn't there before in the previous wipeout so that's the basics of Pacer's anti-grav racing system fastest to the flag but you can slow down your opponent by hitting them with weapons fire if you need to replenish your weapons or replenish your shield, you will have to compromise your racing line to do that. So if you're getting weapons and shielding, it's going to slow you down. Or if you're getting hit by weapons, it's going to slow you down. Uh, and that's the that's the balancing act you have to do fundamentally in Wipeout, or in this case, Pacer's anti-grav racing system. Right, so back to the review. The fundamental basics are quite similar. So anyone who played Wipeout before and enjoyed that game, you should feel it pretty much immediately at home with this. And the the, the, the handling and the basic physics and all that sort of thing, it, it's all there. You should be able to just pick this up and kind of run with it. 
Um, my first gripe that I have to make mention of is basically when you jump into the campaign, uh, so you start off playing the t tutorial, so it's like a sort of like training academy mode, and then that kind of chucks you into the campaign. Um, you definitely want to play these, but when, it f when the game first starts up, this game is just launched, and the very first thing that happened was Halloween, and there's some kind of skins and free cosmetic stuff that was available from PlayStation Network for the game, for Halloween. When I first booted up the game, that's the first thing it showed me. It was really confusing, because I was like, what, what, what's going on here? <laughs> you know, uh, there weren't any like uh, cues to navigate somebody who's new to the game through the menus. Obviously, I found my way pretty easily because sort of like, I was like, obviously, I can't just use these cosmetics straight away. It, this must have something to do with Halloween. Obviously, there was cues there, um, it being like you know that it was like pumpkins and skinny bones and stuff like that. But if you're a new player and it wasn't like a season-specific bit of content, that might have confused the hell out of you. You know, took take a while to get yourself up and running and actually flying something just because they didn't communicate it clearly. Anyway, seems like it's a basic thing, but it's important. Back to the game. So you do a bit of the tutorial. The tutorial teaches you the basics of, you know, kind of how to fly the craft and how to control various systems. Again, oh, sorry, I don't think personally for the new player there's not enough cues there. For the experienced player, you just sort of just find your way. Um, I have a gripe though because I like to, when I play Wipeout, I prefer to pilot using the D-pad, and I use I only use the shoulder buttons then for the you know the kind of air braking maneuvers. I do that because I do a lot of barrel rolling, and I like the quick tapping that I can do. I can do it with more precision than I can with the um, the analog stick. Pacer at the moment, for whatever reason, is not allowing me to change or customize my control layout. So it gets scored down for that. Um, but maybe that's just a teething issue for launch. I'm not sure. You've got your standard gameplay modes. So once you've gone through the campaign a little bit, you'll, you'll unlock a few things, you'll get some credits and you'll get rolling. And it'll just give you a soft launch to the, the different gaming modes. So the different gaming modes, you've got Quick Race, which is, as I say, fastest to the flag. You can shoot people to slow them down. You can shoot people and blow them up, which will have to force them to like reset on the track. But it's basically, it's just a normal race. You have time trial, which is the fastest over a collection of laps, so it's like a sequence of three laps. And that's pretty much the same as uh, Wipeout. Speed run, which is basically just one lap, ultimate pace, lap record, you know, what's the fastest you can do this track. And um, again, pretty much the same as Wipeout HD, uh, any Wipeout that's come before it. Uh, that's the kind of basic bread and butter of the game. It's the quick race, time trial, speed run. And then you start to get into some of the newer features of the game. So you've got the elimination mode. Now this is the first one for me that was quite interesting. Um, it's, it's a welcome addition. It doesn't seem that fancy on the face of it. This game it doesn't have it doesn't embrace visual cues quite as much as uh, Wipeout did when it as it finished off with HD and Fury. Um, and I'll explain that a little bit further as I go into this. So in this mode, elimination mode. It's basically you get like this uh, uh, countdown that happens every so often. So you're flying along and you get a countdown. At the end of each countdown, whoever's in last place gets eliminated. Then you have a bit of a cool down period and then another countdown starts and so on. And so you, you find yourself jockeying for position and it's quite easy if you get knocked into the walls, things like that, for people to slow you down dramatically. If you've got to catch up, if you've got a lot of work to do to catch up, you have to use your boost quite heavily. And it takes a good while to recharge, and you need it to be racing cleanly for it to recharge effectively. Um, so that's an interesting mode, and I really like it. It develops quite a lot of tension at the onset of every countdown, and it's really easy to go from first to last in a heartbeat. Um, and so yeah, uh, yeah, that's a great mode, really appreciate it. You've got the destruction mode. Destruction mode is the equivalent of the eliminator mode from previous Wipeout. And it's more of a battle mode, so it's not really racing, it's you're just out to destroy the opponent's craft, as many of them as you can, in a certain amount of time. Uh, so it's a heavy focus on offensive weapons play. Um, but some people are really good with defensive weapons, so, you know, 
it gets really interesting with that. Now, where pace is very different to Wipeout, in Wipeout it's luck of the draw. Uh, you hit weapons pads on the track, and you, you have the, the well weapons collection pads, and you have the speed pads. And it was randomized as to which weapons or shields or whatever features you could pick up for your ship. They all came from the weapons pads. Pace is different. You have shield pickups, weapon pickups, and then the speed pads. And you determine which weapons you're going to use by customizing your own loadout. And um, so that's the battle side of it. When you play Destruction, you select your loadout that's ideal for your gameplay style. And off you go, you fly and you destroy as many as you can. It doesn't, as far as I can tell, it doesn't have a way to reverse the craft. So if you get knocked out of the firefight and they're all flying along, Three, you've lost them. Two, it takes ages one, to catch up and go. you know kind of get back involved in things. From my experience so far, it could be that I just haven't played it enough. It's the first mode where I'm going to downscore it, where I don't think it lives up to Wipeout. The next mode on it is... Um, you know, you have the, the endurance mode, and that's basically manage your shields, but try to go as fast as possible. If you hit the walls, it costs you more shield power than it usually does. If people bash into you, it's the same. And it's very easy for people to just... It's very argy-bargy, basically. It's like, try to just... If you're not in first, disrupt the other people's race as much as you can to get them to slow down. Because if they have to go offline and pick up shields, then they're not hitting speed pads, so they can't go fast. Um, and that's the name of the game, and then you use the boost to try to track down the leader. If you're in first place, you just try to race as clean as you can, don't make any mistakes, and you should be able to stay in front. And um, basically, last man left racing up front, and you know you should win once the time runs up, then you, you win the race. Then the next mode that really sort of caught my eye and really got my excitement going is this, which is the storm mode. So basically the idea is you're racing along and you're inside this big sort of energy bubble. And as you race along, the bubble contracts and gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And this presents some interesting problems. So it's very focused on weapons play again, but it's not the same sort of outright aggression as a destruction mode, because you need to have a lot of control in how you're piloting the craft, particularly when the bubble starts to get smaller. If you find yourself outside of the bubble for too long, your craft will be destroyed. So, it's an interesting mode because if you go too fast, it has dire consequences. Uh, which is fantastic in Wipeout because your instinct in anti-grav racing is to just go as fast as you can most of the time. Uh, so there's quite a lot of different skills that you have to kind of juggle to make it in Storm mode. And it gets really, really intense with you know, when you get down to the final sort of two or three craft uh, left in the round. Then and, and the walls are really closing in. I, I really love this mode for that tension, and I highly recommend people just check this game out just for that. Um, then the last mode is the what they call flow momentum mode, which I'm sorry, I don't like that name. I don't like the name flow momentum. <laughs> Uh, but essentially, it's kind of equivalent to Wipeout HD and Fury's zone mode. Um, so you're racing down the track, you want to hit as many speed pads as you can, that will generally accelerate the craft, and then you've got these green zone gates, and if you hit each of those, and you don't crash into stuff, you accelerate into different zone classes and speed classes. Um, and so you should be able to, in theory, as long as you can fly cleanly, you should be able to just go faster and faster and faster as you go along, until you can't humanly pilot the craft around the track anymore. And so obviously you're going there to try to set a, you know, a, a zone record um, or, you know, cover as many laps really uh, at as high a speed as possible. And uh, it works, it does it, you know, what it says on the tin fundamentally, but since this claims, this game claims to be a successor to Wipeout, I have to downscore it a little bit. I said earlier about how it doesn't have the visual cues that Wipeout HD and Fury expansion had. And that still stands. So here you just have these sort of green gates, whereas obviously in Wipeout HD and Fury you had the, this, this wild Technicolor rainbow every time you, uh, you know, pass through different zones and things like that. It had really a really strong audio-visual side to it. The music in Pacer is good. 
but it's not like Wipeout. Wipeout had some of the best dance music you could ever wish for in a game, in their game. Pacer, I don't think they've managed to achieve that same sort of ambience. But there's a couple areas where the game is doing really well in Excels, and I alluded to the loadouts before, and this is the loadout screen here. The level of customization that you can achieve with craft, and the personal attachment that you'll have to each of the craft because of the work and time and effort that you've put into them, I think is one of the best features of the game, where in Wipeout, you didn't really actually have real allegiance to any one craft. You would just basically pick the one you were most comfortable with. Um, and you play the other ones really just to unlock the achievements and things like that. Um, you know, if you needed, you know, to get the, the beats eco, you'd obviously have to use the piranha, but you didn't use it because you loved it, you used it because you had to, because there's no other craft that could do the, the speed you needed, you know, that sort of way. Anyway, so let's wrap it up. Um, so it's $32.99 on PlayStation Network. These days, that's not, that's not a lot of money anymore for a game, <laughs> sadly. <laughs> um, is it worth the $32.99 just outright as a standalone game if you're a new player or a uh, returning veteran? Yes, I would say it is. It offers a nice wide range of gameplay modes that will keep you going for a while. Um, you know, they're, they're all interesting. The fundamental gameplay mechanics are, are good. I haven't had any glitches. I haven't had anything like that sort of screams of like, oh, that's, that's a bad product. Um, you know, that's malfunctioning. Aside from one key thing, and this is where I'm gonna pick my biggest bone with it. Um, so, I said earlier, this game had been beta tested back in 2015. <laughs> it's 2020 now, and they launched it on PSN, and it still has no, from what I can tell, there's no online support, there's no servers up and running, no one's playing online. And I'm sure we're all trying. And maybe I just missed the press releases or something like that. I don't know, it had a lot of time to get ready this game and uh, it's not available to play online and that's where the community is at its best so I have to mark it down a bit for that. It's, it is very samey to wipe out um, but I think it's kind of meant to be. It's kind of developed by its own for its own in a lot of ways so I'm not going to really downscore it too much for that. I think there's some problems here and there with a couple of the game modes but there's also some really great originality to the game modes, and I have to applaud the customization. I think overall, most reviewers gave this a 7 out of 10. I'm going to go probably a bit higher. I'm probably going to say, you know, if you're into fast racing, I think it's an 8 out of 10. I think it has to be an 8 out of 10. There's no one else that does anti-grav racing, and anti-grav racers haven't had a sequel in ages and they're happy. All of them are happy with this game. But I have to down market back down to that seven for not having the online play available. I don't understand why. That's my final verdict. But get the online side of this singing, and it's an eight out of 10. It's not perfect, but it's got everything you want it, and it's got some real fresh, nice new modes to really get stuck into, sink your teeth into, if you're into Antigraph. Till next time, see you later. Hey guys, really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, leave us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe so you can get future updates. Until next week, take care and we'll see you soon.